Welcome to Electronline. To get a better understanding of the Fourier transform, what we're going to do here is we're going to take a single pulse and we're going to widen it. Now notice that the pulse is in the time domain and the width of the pulse goes from minus tau over 2 to tau over 2, so tau is actually the width of the pulse. And let's say that tau is equal to 2. Could be 2 seconds, 2 milliseconds, whatever it is. And now we're going to convert that to the Fourier transform and what we end up with is we end up with the sync function. The amplitude here is going to be equal to A, which is the amplitude of the time domain function here, times tau, which is of course in this case the width of the pulse. Notice that the larger or the wider the pulse becomes, the larger tau becomes and the higher the amplitude when we do the Fourier transform. Now the sync function looks like this and notice that the first point where it crosses over the frequency axis right here occurs at 1 over tau times 2 pi on the right side and minus 1 over tau times 2 pi on the left side. Now in the example here, if tau is equal to 2 and we plug that in here, notice the 2's cancel out and we simply end up with pi on the right side as the crossover point and minus pi on the left side, 2 pi for the second crossover point, 3 pi and so forth. Now what happens when we widen the pulse? Now the pulse is still from minus tau over 2 to tau over 2, but now tau is 20. We increase tau, we multiply it times 10. What that means is that first of all, the amplitude of the central maximum here in the frequency domain is now 10 times as high because the pulse is 10 times as wide. Also, it narrows the pulse. Notice that now the crossover point on the first point is 0.1 pi and minus 0.1 pi on the left side. So we actually narrow the poles by a factor of 10 and every crossover point again will be over like this will be 0.2 pi, 0.3 pi, 0.4 pi. Again, one tenth of what it was before. Now what happens when we continue to increase the pulse width and we make the pulse width infinite in both directions? Well, that would cause the amplitude to become infinite in the vertical axis and that the width will become zero in the horizontal and the frequency axis. It turns out that that then becomes the delta function. We have infinite height at zero, zero everywhere else, and it turns out that the Fourier transform equals two pi times the delta function in the frequency domain. In the later video, we'll show you how the Fourier transform can be calculated to be equal to this amount. But here you can simply see that in the limit, and you get kind of the feel for it, as you begin to widen the poles, it narrows the transfer function, the Fourier transform, and then eventually when it becomes infinitely thin, zero width, and infinitely height, you end up with a delta function plus a scale factor of two pi. So that gives you a feel of how the change in the pulse width changes the Fourier transform. On the next video, we'll go in the other direction. We'll make the pulse here thinner and thinner and thinner to see what will happen to the transfer function when we do the Fourier transform of a pulse that becomes extremely narrow in the time domain. And that's how we get a better understanding of the Fourier transform.